What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again, and this time we are here with Mark of As in Hell. Thank you so much for being here today. It's great to have you here. Am I the first one who uh, didn't accidentally call you guys full of hell or ace in hell or any of that stuff? Well, thanks, Alex, for having me. And um, yeah, as you said, As in Hell, uh, full of hell. Um, the band was actually supposed to, to be called Full of Hell because there's a story behind it. Um, that when uh, Michael Paulson, the the, the singer, uh, the, the the guitar player and singer of Volbeat, uh, started this band, he was like, uh, "There's a story. Uh, he's very good friends, or he was very good friends with uh, and and tube singer uh, LG Petrov, and he, uh, he LG tried to call him just right before he died. Uh, tried to call him on the phone, uh, and Michael was at the, at the register in the in the the supermarket and couldn't pick up the phone having the kids with him and stuff so uh he, he forgot about it or whatever and then and next time he he got a call at night couldn't pick up because he was asleep and next time uh he that he heard uh lg passed away so it was like he felt really guilty about like uh not picking up the phone it was like uh and he said it's like yeah, i was probably for for him called to say goodbye and uh that's not going any further you know and the his cancer treatment got stopped and all that. So he felt really shitty about that and really guilty and had a miserable time. And um, after a couple of days, you know, he was like started a run in the, in the, in the fields or something. And all of a sudden his iPod, which was not turned on, all of a sudden blew as um, uh, full of hell from uh, Entombed, you know, and that was, uh, Michael is kind of a spiritual person too, and he said like, "This is a call from LG, and now I'm picking up," you know. So it was like the um, the start where to 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 form a death metal band kind of for him, you know. And uh, we had this talks before about the death metal thing, um, a death metal project, but um, yeah, that was a call for him to 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 call me actually and say, "Mark, you know, uh, we talked about this death metal project. Now it's time to do it." and uh, because it was this first sentence, full of hell, he was uh, uh, looking up and, and said, I, I want to call this project full of hell, but um, very quickly found out that there was a band already existing with exactly that name. So he, yeah, he, he changed the name into S in hell, not ass in hell. And I've, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've seen some, some comments on, on, on blabbermouth and stuff like, like F in hell. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and you know what? Uh, it's fine. You know, I can live with that. But you know what? I've always okay. said, if I started a band, and I became huge, you know, headlining arenas, I would make my backdrop every comment on blabbermouth. That's what I would do. <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. Yep. I, I think we need to have fun with that. Shout out to blabbermouth, though. They have been very supportive over this uh, podcast. But with the formation of the band and the making of this album, which isn't any easier to pronounce or any less awkward to pronounce, uh, Impihora, if I did that correctly, um, you know, this is a fantastic album. It is absolutely hard hitting. It is really like I consider an underrated death metal classic. Like, you know, as somebody who has seen Volbeat plenty of times and, you know, they're always on tour with like, you know, a radio friendly, you know, rock audience and whatnot to see this was a great surprise for people who haven't heard mm. this album yet do you feel that fall of the loyal warrior and island of dead men and uh, desert of doom is maybe a good representation of this whole album or is that just one little taste of what's to come well um i think it's every every song on this album stands out for itself you know i can't really pick a song that i would say is my favorite song it's every day it's a different song and the same with the with me like listening to my own stuff you know i can't really listen to when when i finish the project you know i never listen to my own stuff ever again uh, besides like if i have to prepare for two for a tour and then remember the songs or whatever you know but with this album it was different you know it's like it was like i really like this album to listen to you know like also in the car and of course you want to check out the, the sound and stuff and i couldn't really pick a song which i would say it's like this is my favorite song um I, I I like all the songs and all the songs have a different different kind of uh, punch kind of you know very I mean, I mean I know that Michael is a great great um, um, songwriter you know but he's also a great great songwriter for death metal and that is probably the first time um, that he I mean after almost 25 years when he finished um, 
uh, Dominus that he wrote a death metal song again. So, uh, but you can still hear that he has a good structure. He's good, a good structure in in, in writing a song and uh, make it, it also like having a hook and stuff like that. You know, the songs pretty much stick in your ear very quick uh, without being like cheesy or commercial or anything. You know, but I think that's uh, his his songwriting. Uh, talents he has already over the last uh, 25 years with Volbeat, I would say. I think any any artist that could do like those multiple styles, like oh, one artist who doesn't get enough credit for what he does, but you have Monty Pittman, who is, you know, a fantastic metal musician and is playing with Madonna at the same time. Yeah. Like, if you're yeah. able to sort of fluctuate in that sort of style like that, that's a talent within itself, regardless of what instrument you're playing. And I think that's extraordinary but speaking for yourself in a way because you uh, have been in a lot of great death metal bands as well i mean just to name a few like insidious disease is a fantastic is a fantastic band and you've been a veteran so did you almost kind of a silly question did you almost have to uh, like help michael paulson sort of like uh fit back into the death metal shoes again <laughs> no not at all not at all i mean our our path um goes back to the very early like 90s i would say um, when I was uh, playing in Morgoth and he was still playing in with Dominus, I mean, he had he, he had played in death metal bands before, you know, in the 90s. He was the main man in a band called Dominus from, from Denmark. He had his uh, little death metal band in, in Denmark. And when we played uh, with Morgoth in uh, in Copenhagen or Esbjerg or cities in, 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 in Denmark, we always had like Dominus supporting us. Dominus and... Uh, Invocator. Invocator is the band of uh, Jacob Hansen who produced the album uh, and who's also like a producer for bigger bands like Arch Enemy and uh, stuff like that. So, um, and he was like, oh man, this is great. I want to play the bass. I want to be a mu musician as well now because he liked it so much. He was so into it, you know, and usually he is not, uh, I mean, he's a producer nowadays, but he loved this stuff so much that he said, ah, I want to play bass on this record. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and my, 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 my history with Michael goes back to, uh, yeah, mid-90s when we uh, played those shows together in, in, in Denmark and we always, like, yeah, treated our, our uh, uh, support bands really good, you know, maybe that's a, it's a karma, you know, that pays back kind of now, uh, being nice to your, to your support bands, you know, we always let them use the whole PA, whole light system and stuff like that. And back then, um, yeah, there was a couple of shows we did, and um, I, I didn't follow the Volbeat path, actually. I, I knew, okay, uh, Dominus stopped, Borgo stopped, and then uh, when Insidious Disease, the first album of Insidious came out, uh, Michael contacted me, and he wrote me an email and said, oh, I bought the Insidious Disease record, and it's so fucking great, it's, uh, uh, you still got the voice and all that, you know, it's like, fantastic, I love it, and... Um, Hey, I'm, I'm gonna play. I'm, I'm playing with my new band, uh, together with Entombed in Berlin in a couple of weeks. Uh, do you want to come by and, and, and show up? You know, it's like, it's like, all right, yeah, yeah, cool. You know, and uh, I didn't know. I mean, I haven't, I haven't followed Volbeat to that time, and that was 2008. And I thought, okay, these guys are playing with Entombed, so all right, they have a good, they have a support slot for Entombed. But it was the other way around. It was, you know. Volbeat already like pulling 10,000 people at that time and and to supporting them. So uh, I was like, man, this is strange. You know, it's like uh, a lot of people look like this rockabilly guys. I didn't know that Entombed changed the audience or the music that much that they draw this rockabilly kind of audience. Yeah. And when I walked into the venue, I was like, wait a minute, you know, Entombed is already playing. So, I mean, it's 730. So is Volbeat headlining here? And I didn't even know about the band that much, you know. I just found out that evening, and that was a fucking funny surprise, you know. And I said, "Michael, man, what's going on? Your, your, this band is huge." <laughs> I said, "Yeah, sorry." <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, hey, you know what? Again, anybody who says you're selling out can continue living in their mom's basement forever, and uh, I think that's again pretty. Uh, that's an excellent story right there, because I love hearing those stories on how bands that. <clears throat> excuse me how bands that uh grow up to be something massive but they started in like a real underground like hardcore scene or underground black or death metal scene i've always loved yeah. hearing those stories like you know you see uh 
my one of my favorites is when you see one of Tool's earliest shows and Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine before they blew up was just sort of like chilling in the background. It, it, those are always some great memories to have. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I saw those exactly those bands you mentioned. I saw them uh, in Cologne on a on the on a festival called Popcorn oh, wow. in the early nineties. I, I remember seeing Tool in a very small place to, with their first album. You know, it's like there were like hundred people there, and then they blew off. You know, and they were fantastic. You know, also same with Rage Against the Machine. Saw them with like uh, yeah in in a, in a small club, like with hundred people. And I was like, fuck, what's going on here? You know, it's like. Yeah, and that is uh, yeah, it's it's great to to have been part of something like uh, yeah, in, in the early '90s there was a lot of fantastic stuff coming out. You know, this this year '91 was so massive with like those releases, and I was fortunate enough, to, uh, uh, lucky enough to to see all those bands when were then when they were in their beginning mm -hmm. uh, stages. You know, like also with whatever nirvana even you know it's like I was, seeing them in a small club and stuff that was yeah or in a youth uh, center even you know that was kind of a different time but yeah same with with michael you know he he's, he's not a like he, he didn't he didn't come out out of nowhere he was in the yeah, he was playing death metal since he was like a 15 year old kid you know and then of course he loves also the uh the uh, the other kind of stuff the rockabilly stuff the the johnny cash stuff and that's when he started the band Volbeat. But to that time, I was kind of out of that scene, you know? I didn't even know the band Volbeat. I mean, I've probably heard the name, but I didn't even know that it was Michael doing this, you know? So I was kind of surprised when I came to the venue. It was like 10,000 people there, these, all these rockabilly chicks, and it was like, man. And to, I knew that Entomb got this death and roll kind of thing going, but it was like, man, did they change so much that they draw this really good looking girls and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, uh, all right. Uh, but then it was, of course, uh, not N2 that pulled the people, it was Volbeat. So I was like, man, this is uh, got totally confusing me. And I was like, and it was fun. And, uh, but yeah, since then we reconnected and we also had a, this evening, especially was a great evening, like having the N2 guys, which we toured with or played with in the, in the early days of the nineties, you know, it was a big party, big big hello, big big thing, and since then Michael and me always like talked about this death metal uh, project we should do. And he was always Mark, you've got still the, the great voice and stuff. We should do a death metal, event. and I said, all right, this is not never gonna happen because Volby was so like uh, exploding and getting bigger and bigger, and every time they came to Berlin, they played bigger venues up to twenty thousand people, you know. So I was like all right you know it's like <laughs> let him talk you know but we always like exchanged uh, links back in the day we traded demos nowadays we trade uh, exchanged links from from youtube death metal bands underground stuff that sounds like exactly like the 88 demo of mantas or whatever you know it's like listen to this listen to that and he's a total death metal nerd he knows so much about death metal bands all worldwide you know and uh, always wears the shirts, you know, the death metal shirts. So it's kind of strange, you know, that he's uh, in such a huge band, but he's it's kind of split mind, kind of, you know. Yes, yeah. you know, one one side is the death metal side, which is still in his heart, and the ball beats uh, side, which is also in his heart, but a different, totally different world, you know. So, yeah, yeah, that's how, how it came together. And actually, he called me after this. Um, LG uh, incident and after LG passed away, he said, Mark, we have to do this death metal big thing now. And I said, yeah, I'm on, that's, let's do it. That's a very beautiful origin story to be able to reconnect with that. I wish I was around in 91, but I was sadly negative too at the time. But uh, but um, <laughs> uh, for you, you've had a very busy year, not even just with As In Hell, but you know, with you know putting out Anthem of the Lost this year with uh, Demio Stan, as well as you know uh, putting out Iron Times with Desecration. You uh, you know, I hope to hear some more Insidious Disease, but you also put out the Leaper Colony album this year and even with your whole history between uh action jackson and uh, morgoth and power of expression yep 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 no action yeah <laughs> yeah it's great yep exactly <laughs> happy uh 20 years next year to that demo but um uh i'm just wondering with every project you've been involved with is there a different creative energy or different creative mind frame channeled into all of those or is there just a method behind your madness that applies to every project you work with <laughs> Well, I'm, uh, 
I think um, if the the virus m music hits you, and that hit me with like uh, uh, hit me massively in the late '80s or mid '80s when I was like listening to the thrash movement. You know, I, I grew up with my father's records like uh, Led Zeppelin. Then turned it, bought the, my own stuff uh, because I like the covers of Iron Maiden, the uh, the layout and all that. And then it discovered more and more the metal music, and it still lives in my heart. You know, it's like. I, I can't stop making music and that's uh, also when I kind of pulled out of the death metal stuff in the late 90s or early 2000s. I had this little band called Action Jackson. That's, I mean, I, uh, that's that anybody knows about this band is fantastic. Or just <laughs> spends never too much time on metal archives like myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was just like a, a band that was in a garage band kind of, like a street rock garage band. Metal archives thing. knows. They, they are the gods. Yeah. <laughs> just for ourselves kind of you know played a couple of local shows in berlin and stuff you know never thought about like the big thing you know but also like it was just fun you know but also um yeah when uh, it came became more serious again when uh, when i did uh, insidious disease together with uh, shane from napalm and 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 Silenos from uh, from from demo borg here and that was like when it really hit me again the death metal stuff it was like ah this is you know it's still living in my heart and I was like a little bit cast away in the early 2000s I would say because I had like uh, yeah my, 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 my career as uh, I mean, worked in the movie business for a long time and stuff so I was following my career a little bit on that path uh, and then I got the opportunity to sing with uh, Insidious Disease so and that's uh, re, uh, relit the flame kind of to the death metal stuff again it was I mean it's still it, well, always was was there but it kind of was kind of hidden because i had so much other stuff to do like uh personally and also with my career in the in, in the business and stuff and but you can't really like distinguish that flame that is once lit uh with a metal metal heart kind of you know and um yeah that was um when i when i really was like ah it's it's in there it's it i have to do it, it it's it, it's cathartic to be on a stage, to be in a rehearsal room and just do the vocal stuff, you know, it's, it, it's, I'm a very mellow person, you know, and leave my, uh, my aggressions out on stage or while I'm singing. And um, yeah, that's, it, it's a, it's a part of my life. And um, also with the, with the other guys, you know, uh, with uh, the, um, his creation with um, uh, Demo Stone, which is more a thrash kind of thing, you know, it's, this is all stuff that I really like, you know, it's all stuff that reminds me on, yeah, this is kind of like in the early days, you know, like the thrash stuff. That was a big part of me when I was like 15, 16, you know, discovered thrash stuff from the Bay Area, Slayer and so on, you know, and also the German stuff, um, which is a part of me as well. Before I became a death metal vocalist, I was totally into thrash, you know, and that was kind of like reviving this uh, thrash roots. So yeah, it's it's always there. It's always been there, and it's probably never gonna stop because I love it, and it's, I think it's just like as I said, cathartic thing to 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 scream or to uh, to to perform and stuff. As a vocalist too, do you need to hear the music before you come up with lyrics, or do lyrics ever help guide the direction of the music? Well, I'm mo mostly a, a guy who's who needs to listen to the music first. And then come up with lyrics. I sometimes write stuff, but it's like uh, that's something I wouldn't say fits on music. Sometimes it's more like a poetic kind of thing, which I probably could fit into music. But I think ah, this is too different from from the stuff I would like to express with my music. So if I write stuff, it's a di it's a different thing. It's not like the brutal, sarcastic, ironic uh, death metal stuff. It's more like a little bit psych psychologist stuff that I really into, you know, like uh, that kind of stuff that is like kind of weird. Um, maybe I have one time have one once have a project where it will more fit. But um, if I'm writing lyrics for the death metal stuff, it's more like I have to, I see my, my voice also as an instrument firstly, you know, it's like more like a, a supportive thing to the music, you know, that's why I think the the vocal line is more important sometimes than uh, a certain message that you want to transport with the with the lyrics, you know. 
Yeah. Uh, of course, lyrics are important, you know, and it would, it's great if it has a message and stuff. But on the other hand, I would say, especially in, if in death metal, I, I think it's it's important to have like a a good hook line, a good hook line, and a good flow with the with the with the with the music and with the instruments. And of course, it has to be like transport a message. But the message is not the number one actually in the song, you know. Uh, it's not whatever. It, I don't. I'm. I don't preach politics. I don't preach certain things in music. No, it's more like a fun thing. It's more like a um, like watching a movie or something. So um, it has. It has to have a good good hook or a good message. But uh, it has to transport the song in the first place. That's the most important thing to me. And the, you let me perfectly into the final question because does every project that you've been involved with? Uh, express maybe a different side of you or express uh, a different like uh, meaning or sort of like internal sort of entity in a way or in the end this is all just brutal heavy metal there d doesn't really need to be much of explanation uh, well I mean I'm rooted in the in the metal definitely you know I like all these little uh, projects I have and bands I have but I'm, I'm, I, I feel that there is much more that I still also want to do I'm a big huge fan of the stuff that um, Steve Von Till is doing, you know, with the neurosis stuff and, and the, the weird stuff he's sometimes doing acoustic and stuff. That's something I would like to do and uh, express my voice a little bit in a different way, you know, not only growling, but also maybe a little bit more experimental kind of stuff, which is also a side of me, you know, I'm, I'm, I love the, the metal music and the stuff is in me because I think it's most important uh, if you listen to music when you are 13, 14, 15, 16, that's what really um, forms you for life musically, I think, okay. which you carry in your heart. But you can also develop as a person, as a, as a musician, and have different perspectives. I love a lot of like widespread stuff. You know, I'm not only a metal fan, I just uh, love good music. And mu good music can be uh, also ambient stuff or also electronic stuff. You know, that's... Uh, that's um, some of my interests too, you know, and I've also um, talked to, to Shane about that because he's he's having so many different uh, projects and uh, a, a wide range of music that he loves and he just do does it, you know, he's, he's doing that stuff. And I'm, I'm still like, I mean, how can you do that? You know, it's like you have a family too with two kids, always on tour with Napalm and you still have all these other bands going and that's always great stuff you you know and but that's it's absurd that's, i mean he's a musical master mastermind too you know that's great it's absurd and i don't see myself as such a great musician as he is probably but i lo would love to do more different stuff in the future as well yeah i mean it's absurd how so many people could be in so many bands while having it like it's it's impressive it's admirable like uh and i think uh because you want to make sure Obviously, not everything you create can be gold, but you also still want to put all your energy and your creativity and do your best. And even with albums that I don't like, where or albums that like I don't really resonate with me, you, there's just something to be said where like, okay, I don't like this, but you could tell that there was passion behind it and that all this. So to maintain and yeah. continue that is a lot. I, you know, energy. I've I've, I've always said that like, uh, creative energy isn't always a renewable resource. So it it it's very difficult on how you tap into that well said absolutely you hit the nail with that oh thank you that's pretty metal <laughs> but uh before we go <laughs> before we go i want to thank you so much for your time today most of all thank you for this amazing music finally seeing the light of day just with as in hell you know fucking killing it right now is there any uh chance anything else with the band you would like to promote uh i'd imagine that this album isn't going to be the first as in hell album and is there any chance as in hell will be out on the road too uh, well, I mean, yeah, we're gonna. We, first, we thought it's like it won't be possible to to um, to do like a, a whole tour or so or something like that. But uh, when we recorded the album, we already felt, yeah, this has to be performed live. You know, we have to do some live stuff with that. And um, of course, we wouldn't be able to do like a six-week uh, U.S. tour, six-week Europe tour after that. You know, it's that's not gonna work. But uh, we definitely want to play live and it would be great to play some selected shows on on the east coast or uh, some festivals in the states uh, and that's what we're definitely going to do in europe you know play some festivals uh, and, and and so on yeah and yeah there's uh, a, a, another uh, s and hell album definitely uh, gonna see the light of day 
and we're already <laughs> talking about that stuff. And I think Michael already has some riffs written, so he's uh, he's crazy in that kind of uh, manner as well. That's a, that's awesome. <laughs> and, and, for having me and uh, yeah, I would, would really like to, to play the U.S. again. Uh, we want yeah, you some death fest, something like that. Or yeah, come here great. in New come here in New York, and I'll put Michael's uh, death metal uh, knowledge to test. Like, oh, do you, uh, come here with our underground uh, scene, immortal suffering <laughs> and malignancy and uh, right. pro fanatica and all those guys. We'll get incantation on a bill. We'll get suffocation on a bill. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll, oh, we'll, yeah. we'll mortician. We'll get all of that on board. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome. Oh, that would be perfect. Yeah, yeah I and, love it. And can't forget immolation before I get crucified for that one. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so I took with those guys in, the, in, the, in 91, immolation guys. Yeah, yeah. I don't and know. And too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is about death metal. It's the most brutal form of music out there, but there's such nice. I've always said this is my slogan for death metal evil music for good people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, I've never met a death metal musician who is like a total asshole or something. You know, most of the time, those people are the, the kindest. Uh, and mellowest persons around, you know. Yeah. But I think it's just because they let all the aggression out on stage and with their music, so they, there's no need to be an asshole anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, pretty much, yeah. The only way that you can never be an asshole is either uh, uh, is either being a porn star or a death metal musician. So, but uh, thank you so much, yeah. everybody. We are here with As in Hell. Be sure to check out their fantastic debut album Impe Hora finally seeing the light of day this is Alex from Heavy New York and we will see you next time thank you very much thanks for having me